hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel it is victor once again it's another day so we have another scholarship and today we are at the coventry university in the uk as usual in search of fully funded um, scholarship opportunities and as a matter of fact coventry university is very close to where i stay although i do not study at coventry i study at warwick university but warwick and coventry are in the same city, Warwick and Coventry University are just neighboring universities. So I'm very conversant with this university in the first place. So I'll be looking at direct PhD opportunities. So moving from a BSc to a direct PhD opportunities, to a direct PhD course rather. And um, I'll be talking you through a number of instructions that are not explicit in some of these funding opportunities you see here. Of course, I know you can read some of these things on your own. I'll just talk you through some hidden details between the lines. And of course, if you're coming for the first time, if you're joining us for the first time, do not forget to subscribe. There are assorted scholarships on this channel. That is scholarships from all over the world. Last time we talked about the Irish government scholarship. We talked about scholarship in Canada. There's another one we talked about at Cardiff. So just different scholarships flying all about on this channel. And try to catch at least one. So if, not, if you've not subscribed, this is a good time to do so. So let's begin at Coventry University without any further delay. So you can see funded studentships, not the non-funded one, except you have money, of course, to pursue those ones. And then there are a number of them. Actually, there are 65 different opportunities. And if you notice, there are already... Um, topics, that's research topics for this scholarship. So it means that you're not coming with your own topic, but you're coming to research a predefined topic. And that is the topics you see here. There are several of them here, and in different disciplines as well. Some of them in the social sciences, medical sciences, you know, um, and um, practical sciences. You can see something here on um, metabolism, something here on transportation, and there's, I think I saw one on housing. So there are different ones. And just check and see which one closely aligns with your interest, aligns with something you've done in the past, aligns with your previous degree. And probably be checking one or two of them to like explain some of the opportunities, you know, to explain the admissions requirements as well. So we'll all read them together so let's see which one should we choose so let's look at this one on diabetes diabetes unfortunately is a common um, illness in the world and so it has lots of funding as well lots of people trying to look for solutions so for this one uh, on diabetes you can see it's open to both uk international students including eu students and it comes with the bursary and tuition fees the tuition fees both for uk international including eu students so that's good and um the duration is here three and three and a half okay between three and, and three and a half um, years and the deadline of this one is in may so this one is quite a little bit far away i would say it's quite far away and um the start date is in september so it's quite far away but i would, I would advise that you do not wait till then because they might just find a candidate before that deadline and if you're an, an international student you want to apply very early so you have enough time to apply for your visa these are the things that most of them will not tell you about so it takes a while to apply for the visa and that's june july august period is quite um quite crowded for the visa office because lots of people are applying during that period to come to um, the UK in September, October. So you want to apply way before that and so you can um, stay in front of the crowd or miss the crowd early so you're not caught up in the lengthy visa process. So the project is is um, outlined here, is described here. The funding is also written here, the tuition stipend, the additional allowance, um, other benefits as well. And then the qualification, as I said, you do not need a master's. It's a BSc straight to a PhD. Usually there's an embedded master's in the PhD. So you can see here, bachelor's degree in relevant discipline subjects with a minimum of a 2-1 and a minimum mark of 60% in your project that's in your dissertation 
and then there's something about english language that we'll be looking at shortly let's just open this in another tab there are equally additional requirements such as oral communication skills um independent research but also how to work on a team willingness to travel both locally and internationally interest in digital health behavioral interventions so you just to apply you just go straight here and apply and they require you to submit these supporting documents i think supporting documents you're talking about is your bachelor's degree where did we see the quali these qualifications here and if you need to also submit like an english language test as well so support those documents and then a supporting statement where you're required to talk about your expertise and your interest in the subject so um what do they call them a statement of motivation letter of motivation or a statement of purpose in case you do not know the meaning of these documents on my channel i've talked about these documents already and just scroll down here yeah just scroll down here go to home and then scroll down and check the different tabs so if you check the different tabs you see letter of motivation statement of purpose so here i gave samples how to write them i also read out my own the one that got me five different scholarships around the world so you have lots of samples lots of guidance on how to write that document so do not worry about it as well there's also a sample here on how to write a cv so you also got that covered so that is it for this particular m1 so check for your own different disciplines your own different the topic that aligns with your own background and your own discipline however i noticed something quite funny on this website and some not all some of the opportunities here have um, deadlines that have already elapsed let me give you an example look at this one safeguarding guiding communication let's see let's open it and check the deadline very quickly so you can see here the deadline was in december but it's still on the page and that's strange there is another one here i think this as well a number of them like that not all of them but here and there might get a number of them with um deadlines that are that have elapsed already so this is 15th of january so i think most of these um most of them are still open but the ones that are closed often have this partnership between coventry and daikin university they should have been taken out from here already but they're still there so i don't know probably it's indicating that they are still available i do not know you can always verify from the university their contact persons here but i think from the dates they have already elapsed so if you see an opportunity here that has coventry university and daikin university it's often the case that the deadline has already elapsed but also check check for yourself to make sure so there's this one on masculinity toxic masculinity quite interesting for the sociologist in the house and there's nothing about daikin university here so we could check and see whether it's still open yes it's still open it can open in may so that's good so our technique works our technique of elimination so those that um are composed or are comprised of a partnership between coventry university and daikin university um, are already closed but you can communicate further with the department to make sure we are correct and let's talk quickly about the english language requirements i think we opened it quickly somewhere yeah this is it so english language requirements and they said toefl or ielts these special exams and they require a seven or toefl they require 95 and um, 21 in each component but are there waivers um this is where the the problem arises and um, for coventry university they say only the only exception to this requirement is for students educated to the uk degree level standard in the minimum of english there and there the, that's the majority countries usually and if you click on this majority countries it takes you to this government page and there's a very short list here of english speaking countries and um, for instance my country nigeria is not here but it's an english-speaking country i studied all through in english so what are we doing from here there's not much information here about um, like waivers for other people who have studied in the english language and this is a problem so i would ask you to engage directly with the university and see if you can get a waiver even though your country is not on this 
list, this very short list, I would say. So try to clarify with the university or ask them, oh, can I take the exams after I've been nominated? I'll give it like a conditional um, admission. Can I then take the exam? At least then you know that the, you already have the offer, you already have the scholarship, and you're simply waiting for the English test. So that's the bit of a pickle here that we that we have here, the little bit of a problem. And I hope it's, it's not going to be a stumbling block for you. And um, that's it, guys, as usual. We cannot wait to celebrate you. There are several materials on this channel already on fully funded scholarships, not just the scholarships themselves, but also how to apply for them, like how to write scholarship essays, how to write a CV, just everything you need. is a compendium of scholarships. It's like a supermarket of scholarships. So do not forget to subscribe if you've not done so already. And I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now.